Hello YouTube viewers and welcome back to the future fans. Now today I'm going to review this, which is the 115th scale DeLorean time machine from the movie Back to the Future Part 2. And I just thought I'd do a DeLorean review because, you know, I haven't done one in a while. And also to celebrate the fact that Back to the Future is back in the cinemas. So check that out while you still can because it's an awesome movie and it's even better when you're watching it in the cinema. So as always, let's uh, start off by taking a look at the box, which is here. As you can see, nice big box, uh, nice and blue. Um... Nice lightning bolts just down the sides there as well. A uh, picture of the DeLorean there in the corner. 115th scale time machine. Uh, some warnings about choking hazards. Nice big Back to the Future Part 2 logo. Of course, this is from the second movie, hence the uh, Mr. Fusion at the back here. And uh, it's for ages 8 and up. Uh, taking a look down in the corner here, as you can see, it's uh, an enter it says from Entertainment Earth. It's uh, an exclusive. Uh, so, of course, it's limited edition, so whatever you do, get your hands on this if you like it as quickly as possible. And it's from Diamond Select Toys. Taking a look at the top here, as you can see, just same information as before. There's a little try me option there to try out the lights and sound effects. And uh, around the back here, just some more information on the DeLorean in general, really. And uh, a couple of extra pics of the actual toy itself. But uh, that's enough of a dance box, let's take a look at it out of its box. Okay, here it is, and uh, just before I continue with the review, it's uh, something I'd love to point out and show you here. When you first take the DeLorean out of its box, it comes in this kind of plastic casing here, which you can uh, just lift it out of and uh, set it to one side. And uh, this casing is absolutely fantastic because you know it hugs in tight around the DeLorean, and also it's fantastic if you want to ever take the item out of the box, take a look at it, put it on display, and then repackage it if you've kept the box. So, uh, really fantastic for reboxing purposes. But, you know, enough about that. Let's just set that to one side and review the DeLorean itself. Uh, here it is. First of all, of course, as you can see, it is massive. Uh, being, of course, 115 scale, it is huge. And uh, just taking a look at it here, uh, detail-wise, uh, around the front, as you can see, there's unfortunately no DeLorean motor car logo. Now, this is because, unfortunately, Diamond Select couldn't get the actual rights to use the DeLorean motor car logos or anything like that, despite the fact they've built a DeLorean car. So, a bit unfortunate there. Some fantastic detail, though, however, on the actual front bumper there, which actually does light up blue whenever uh, you've tr triggered a little function to let travel through time. Uh, I keep feeling that the front headlights could have been detailed a little bit better, though. Uh, Taking a look around the side here, you can see that little wire runs on the back there. All detailed incredibly fantastically. Uh, the door is detailed very nicely too. But uh, of course the real detail on any of the Julian cars is on the back. So taking a look here as you can see, uh, the Mr. Fusion there looks really fantastic. Uh, as does the little exhaust vents. Also the dual exhausts down the back here. Uh, along with that little bit of wiring there. And uh, of course on the actual back of the car, as you can see this is detailed fantastically well. You've got uh, some of the little bits and pieces and... Uh, just various uh, things that make the car work, I suppose, the various props that they used in the show. And, uh, of course, around the sides here, great detail as well. Uh, also, the Mr. Fusion's attached, which is a nice little feature, and it's nice and tough. I can't help but feel, though, that there is some detail missing from the back, and it kind of just looks a wee bit rushed, and it looks like it was just kind of, like, painted, like, quite quickly in a factory kind of, you know, conveyor belt. This actual number plate here on the back, it is the actual number plate from Back to the Future Part 2 the uh, little barcode because a lot of the DeLoreans from Back to the Future Part 2 still have the out of time license plate which is kind of annoying but well this one here at least I've actually tried to put the barcode on but of course it is uh, it's kind of like the wrong barcode design I don't really know if you can see there and uh, this one's kind of a more yellowy colour whereas in the movie it's red and silver okay now I'm taking a look at the interior here uh, as you can see again nice detail there uh, nice sort of detail there in the steering wheel and steering column and uh, all the little gauges just uh, in the background there, a little uh, handbrake as well, very nicely detailed in there. Also the time circuits, there's also some detail just, if I can show you here, up underneath the roof there as well, just like in the film, so that's nice. Uh, the flux capacitor there in the background too, uh, just uh, in between the headlights there. You can't really see it too well, but it is there. And uh, also a lovely little feature that I like, oh, almost wrecking the place there. A little feature that I like then, you can't really see it, let's see if I can get... A better angle there. Uh, do you know the little dialer that tells you where uh, you're going, where you are and where you've been? Well, that actually has imprinted on October 21st, 2015 and the uh, other relevant dates on it uh, to coincide with the fact that is this is, of course, the car from Back to the Future Part 2. So, again, some fantastic detail there. Something I really wasn't expecting, but, uh, again, really nice. I'll show you some more of the detail just around on the other side of the car here. As you can see, again, fantastically well detailed there. Of course, you can see the little... Uh, 
little uh, stick there as well to change gears with a well, little gear stick. And of course, up in the top there as well, you can see it has a little uh, rear view mirror as well up at the top. So again, very detailed cockpit and really nice. Style. Very, I like that very much. The actual uh, front of the car here can be lifted up here, the actual bonnet here, so just if you put your finger in underneath there and lift it up, as you see this lifts up. Unfortunately, not a lot of detail on the inside whenever you do lift it up. Just a little uh, options there for uh, try me off and play functions of the car. And uh, this, of course, reveals the battery compartment, which takes three AAA batteries. And uh, just to insert those, you need a little star screwdriver just to remove this panel. So, uh, unfortunately, apart from that, uh, not a lot of detail underneath the hood. Uh, taking a look underneath the car just to show you here again some fantastic detail just underneath you can kind of see the exhaust there as well and a uh, little basic imprint of the uh, uh, chassis just underneath there uh, there's also this little switch here which just like in the uh, Sunstar version if you pull this down it makes the wheels move so just to show you here they pop out like that which uh, again is a very fantastic little feature and uh, just to, to make the wheels pop up again you just pull that back into place and uh, the wheels go back into place, which is fantastic. And of course, the other fantastic feature about this car is uh, its light and sound effects, which are activated just by pushing this button up at the top here, just at the back, so as you can see, just that little big silver one there. So uh, pushing it once activates just the car's normal noises, so uh, as you can see, I'll just run through them quickly for you. So I think that's the door opening noise, uh, which is quite nice, and of course, as you can see, the actual front headlights light up, and they're quite bright too, which is very fantastic. And uh, just to show you around the back here as well for the next noise, uh, not only do the rear lights light up, but also these exhaust vents light up, which I find kind of annoying because the rear exhaust vents should only light up like whenever it's just traveled through time or whenever it's flying. So quite unfortunate that uh, they don't have two little separate LEDs for that. So to show you the next noise, which is the time circuits on, and uh, not only that, but if you can see in the background there, the the front headlights are so bright they actually uh, project onto the back of my stage there. Anyway, this is the uh, the main light up and sound effect noise and function that I really love. Uh, this is the traveling through time function, which is absolutely fantastic. So to do that, you press and hold down this for a couple of seconds, and if my calculations are correct. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. The only thing it's missing is a couple of fire trails coming out from behind the back of the wheels. And just to show you in the semi-darkness here, when it does travel through time, the actual interior lights up as well, so the dashboard, the actual time service light up. And so does the flux capacitor, which you can see flashing there in the background. So, absolutely amazing. And not only that, it looks fantastic at night as well, just to show you. Okay, here's the tricky part. Things I don't like about this car. Well, to be honest with you, it kind of feels a bit cheap. Now, I know a lot, a lot of people probably hate me for saying that, but the plastic it's made from kind of feels very cheap, and it, it kind of gives me this impression that it's incredibly mass-produced, and, you know, it's there's not a lot of real detail in it. You know, like the DeLorean DMC numbers missing from the front there, and again from the back just underneath there. Uh, the license plate, while, while I did try it, uh, it's not really the same thing. And there's not a lot of detail on the top here, uh, or on the insides as well. It's also quite shabbily put together too, because I know some people have had some problems with uh, the actual panel from the top of the roof there falling off. Well, I can trump that. My actual seat, the passenger seat, comes out. You know, it's not really a big problem. It can be clicked back into place. But uh, the fact that it is removable so easily is kind of annoying. Uh, also, whenever the wheels, like if you can kind of see in underneath there, you can't really, but uh, you can see kind of some exposed circuitry, which is a little bit annoying. Also, again, with the wheels too, the actual front wheel is smaller than the back wheel. I don't really know if you can see it there, but uh, the wheels are kind of different sizes, which is kind of annoying too. To be frightfully honest, with all the similar features that it has, it kind of reminds me of this, which is the 118th scale Sunstar version that I reviewed earlier uh, in the year. You know... To be honest with you, this one feels like the one for adults, for the collectors, for the hardcore Back to the Future fans because it's so well detailed, it's made from actual stainless steel and there's so many great features about it. Whereas this one is one that I would recommend for, like for example, if you're a parent and you've taken your kids along to see Back to the Future in the cinema and they're like, Mommy, Mommy, I really want a DeLorean, this is the one that you go out and you buy your kids because you know it, it feels like cheap plastic, it, it almost feels like it was made for children. You know, there's you know, if you are an adult collector and like you really are, you love Back to the Future, you love DeLoreans, and you need to have something to display. This is certainly the one that I would go for. This is the highest rated DeLorean I would have. 
uh, in my collection because, as you can see, it does all the same stuff that the uh, other DeLorean does. The only difference is this one lights up and makes noise, which is kind of gimmicky. Please don't hate me for saying this, it's just my opinion, but uh, it does feel kind of gimmicky and, you know, it has all the same features that this one has. So, this one definitely I would recommend for kids. This one is more for the adults than the parents and the collectors. Okay, thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's quite a more reviews online. I've reviewed loads more Back to the Future DeLoreans. I've also reviewed uh, tons of Doctor Who stuff and uh, Robot Wars and Toy Story stuff as well. So if you're into any of that, please feel free to check it out. Uh, you can also subscribe to me. You can add me as a friend. You can also add me as a friend on Facebook. Thank you very much for watching.